Well, let's bring in Ariel Gold. She is the executive director of the Fellowship of Reconciliation, the largest and oldest interfaith peace and justice organization in the U.S. She now also joins me from Washington, D.C. Ariel, as we've been saying here, no call for restraint at all from Biden. Were you surprised? I think this was possibly the most pro-Israel speech that any president has ever given. And I mean, I was and I won't, I, I was and I wasn't surprised. Usually we at least pay lip service to calling for restraint. I, I can't say that the U.S. truly calls for restraint. Uh, we give almost $4 billion a year to Israel's military. But at least we usually pay lip service to it and call for some degree of de-escalation. But in this case, President Biden was... Um, really pledging to be part of uh, Israel's promise. I mean, they have stated a, an intent, a promise to carry out um, horrific war crimes. Well, he did speak about the rule of law. What did you make of that, Ariel? Well, the rule of law, when he speaks about the rule of law, what he isn't speaking about is international law. So the rule of law is kind of a, a false term for the U.S. to use because we don't abide by international law. So rule of law can be whatever Joe Biden decides rule of law is. Uh, rule of law are the war crimes and the violations of international law that the U.S. committed in Afghanistan. Now, international national law, uh, which says that you cannot deny a people, so you cannot deny food, water, um, fuel, and electricity to civilians, like is being done. That's international law. And the Biden administration is yet to say that, that, that Israel's actions to enact this, to tighten um, the siege so that such necessities as electricity and food and water are not allowed in is unacceptable. I mean, it's inhumane and it's immoral and it's a violation of international law. Even the EU has come out against it, saying this is a this is a violation of international law. Uh, well, we do know when we talk about international law that Americans are also among those being held captive by Hamas at the moment. And we know that 14 Americans also died in the attacks on Saturday. How much is that influencing this approach from the White House, do you think? It's horrific. Um, the actions, the acts that the uh, Hamas militants took, the slaughter of civilians, the taking of uh, hostages, elderly women, is is horrific and, and must be condemned. But partnering with Israel, who have hinted that they will not um, put the rescue of the hostages ahead of their revenge, uh, you know, they've They've closed in the Strip entirely, bombing the Rafah crossing. So they now have a captive population uh, to slaughter. And they, they have they have really suggested that they, 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 I think, believe they've said that they won't let the hostages get in the way of that. Um, so it's, it's, you know, a, a horrific massacre, uh, the, the likes of which we haven't seen since at least um, 1982 in Lebanon. Um, in, about to take place with U.S. complicity, and, and Biden has, has blood on his hands. Uh, Ariel, your organization works on peace and reconciliation, so let me ask you this before I let you go. It really feels like this has become a war, too, of narratives, not only with the U.S., but also its Western allies and what we're seeing from perhaps other countries in the world. Given that, and this deeply polarizing space that we're now in, is there any room for mediation here? There has to be room for mediation because there is no military solution to this conflict. The only solution to this conflict, in the words of Isaiah, are to beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks to, to reverse the course that we're on, one of apartheid and separation, one of dehumanizing an entire people, um, one of bombing mosques and churches and schools and homes, and instead to build a society based on our shared values, our true shared values of equality and human rights and justice. 
Ariel Gold there, the executive director of the Fellowship of Reconciliation, speaking to us from Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for joining us, Ariel, and for sharing your thoughts. Thank you.